Welcome back to the channel. This is the Action Figure Grader, and today we're going to take a look at mint on card vintage Star Wars figures. Pretty much everything, I believe, is Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, Power of the Force. And then, as you can tell by this thumbnail, there were a bunch of KB Toys Overstock 2 packs that sold at auction. So, I wanted to go through those, but first, I want to say thank you to Mike Sidious. Uh, he is an Australian viewer who sent me by email a really cool flyer that he found in his belongings that I wanted to show you guys. And he said that this was from a company called Gateway Models that you can see in the top left. And they had mint on cards available for purchase. And he said this is probably dating back to the early 1990s. So keep in mind a couple of things. First, this is in Australian dollars, not US dollars. And I went back and kind of looked at the historical price chart of Australian dollars to U.S. dollars. And roughly, it's about 75 cents is what every dollar by every Australian dollar buys you. So for all of these prices for mint on card action figures, take about 25% off of the price. And that gives you a rough idea of what these were selling for in the early 1990s. Uh, in Aust in U.S. dollars, so it, it's incredible. The, all of these are carded, unpunched figures, and you can see all the different prices here. Uh, the first one that looks the most expensive was Han Solo in carbonite on the Power of the Force card. That was two hundred Australian dollars. So let's call that what about one hundred and fifty U.S. dollars, which is still incredible. The rest of these were all just insanely cheap. I mean, it's it's unbelievable how crazy cheap they were. Uh, they were all kind of in that. I'd say twenty dollars. This is Australian dollars. Twenty dollars to about you know sixty dollars for pretty much everything. So it's it's unbelievable uh, how cheap things were back in the nineteen nineties. And there were some polybagged figures, Kenner bag on on pack offers. So a lot of those are just the standard, you know, alien cantina creatures. Eight dollars Australian dollars for a bagged Snaggletooth. Dengar was $10. So uh, thank you, Mike, for sharing a piece of history as it relates to what prices used to look like way back in the day. So that was Mike Sidious. Thank you again, man. Uh, and he can be found on Instagram at Mike Sidious. All right. So let's go ahead and dig in. This was one I did send to, I, I, I know I, I, I sent it to my Patreon supporters. I might have also had it in a what to buy video, uh, but this was a UKG Yellowed blister, 80% die cast slave one mint on card. Just very light yellowing to it, unpunched card, really nice example. That one ended up going in an auction for 748 pounds, which is about 973 US dollars plus shipping. So, uh, pretty high price, but keep in mind that it was fairly high grade, 75, 85, 85. So, 285 sub scores for that die cast slave one mint on card. Uh, this seller had a couple of really nice gems that he listed at auction. And the first one was a Palatoy Empire Strikes Back store display graded AFA 80. And uh, that is a massive item. It's I don't know if it's coming through, but when you look at it, um, let's see. There we go. Look how big this is. It, you know, Keep in mind the size of the AFA grading labels. Uh, so that one was a massive store display, just really, really cool. And it was, as, as you can see there, labeled a Palatoy 1982 store display for the Empire Strikes Back AFA 80. And that one sold for big money, as you would expect. We've seen a lot of store displays recently on Hakes, and there's a bunch of them going right now on Hakes as of the making of this video that end on the 31st as part of their lot 241 auction, some beautiful bell displays. I mean, just incredible stuff. So this one did sell in an auction for $2,501.98 plus $45 shipping. So about $25.50 all in for that Palatoy store display. And then the same seller also had a Kenner Canada mint and sealed box TIE fighter. How cool is that with the French Canadian box there? And that one was an AFA 80 as well. And that one sold for $14.25. I would wager that would would have gone for a lot more on you know some of the big auction house websites. A lot of people maybe just didn't see this one, but uh, that was a pretty incredible sale as well. 
This was an AFA 75, 31 back A, Snaggletooth. Little surprised to get the 75 score for the blister. Card 85, blister 75, figure 85. Look how mangled that blister was. It had a really big ding in it. And to me, that looks more like a 70 blister score. But, you know, you, you can't predict what AFA will do. It all It's all a little bit... Uh, it's a roll of the dice when you're dealing with, with the grading companies as to how they'll grade things. And, I mean, just looking at it, aesthetically speaking, I feel like that ding is big enough to drop this to a 70. But they did show mercy on the submitter, and they gave it a 75. It did have a big Toys R Us price sticker, punched example. That one sold for 280 And I would argue that this, the, the final sales price reflects that. Um you know, 280 is is probably about what it would go for, even ungraded. So I don't I don't even know if necessarily getting this one graded made much sense, or if the the market really dictated that this was a 75 grade. I, I would argue that I've seen examples like this on Facebook ungraded that sold for about the same price. So you know, maybe more like 250 ungraded. So I, I don't think it was worth grading something like that, but that's just my personal opinion. I mean, I, I just think that, that the, the blister ding was so pronounced and so in your face that I would have tended to round this down to about a 70 grade. Uh, here was a beautiful example of the 41 back A survival kit offer at at driver. And this was an unpunched example with the Toys R Us price sticker. Blister was in really good shape, really clean card overall. I think this gets an 80 grade overall pretty easily. I, I did send this one out in a buy it now alert or you know auction alert to my Patreon supporters, and I believe one of my Patreon supporters did end up getting this one at 306, which I thought was a really good deal. 306, very good deal there. Here's the back of it. You can see a faint crease on the back there, so maybe it gets a, it probably gets a 75 for the card score, but I think the blister is easily an 80 or potentially an 85, and then you know, an 80 or an 85 for the figure score. So I think it's got an outside chance at an overall 80, at worst, probably a 75 plus. So 306, good deal there. Um, here was the 48 back C free Revenge of the Jedi, Luke Skywalker in his Hoth battle gear. This was at auction, partially unpunched. The, the hang tab's kind of hanging off a little bit there, but uh, beautiful clear blister for Luke Hoth. That one sold at 680, which... Uh, that seems about right. The card was in really good shape. Blister also in very good shape. So um, that one did sell at 680 on 20 bids. Same seller also had the same card back for Han Solo and Hoth. And this is the beginning of three different Han Solos that uh, that sold as part of this lot I'm going to cover today. But uh, this one did sell for 460 in an auction. And again, the card was in very good shape overall. And this one, you know, it might be... This is probably a 48B because it has the sticker on the back there. And then, you know, this, this I would assume this is also a sticker 48B versus the 48C where it's actually printed on the card back. So looking at this, you got uh, what's obviously a sticker on the back versus this one where it's actually printed on the card back. So this is the 48B. Uh, for Han Solo in his Hoth outfit. 460 again. The second Han Solo was a Palatoy Return of the Jedi. And this one maybe has some very light yellowing to the blister there. Nothing major though. And overall pretty good shape. That one sold for $174. The Palatoy Han Solo Hoth seems to be a pretty common one. You, you see those pop up fairly regularly. Uh, but this one had the standard square or rectangle blister versus the double stem blister, which we covered in a recent auction for uh, those auctioneers over in the UK that had one double stem. But uh, this one is also a pretty well-known example. And that one, again, sold for 174 And then the last Han Solo is Han Solo in his Bespin outfit. This was a clear blister, 77 back A, AFA 80, unpunched, no price sticker. Beautiful example. And, you know, I expected it to go for a lot of money. It was uh, one that a Patreon supporter sent to me and said, hey, I'm going after this one. So I didn't cover it because I didn't want to mess up his auction bids. He didn't end up winning it because it went for a lot of money. It went for 654 pounds, which is 850 U.S. dollars. That's a big number. But, you know, again, it's hard to find a 77 back Han Solo Bespin clear blister and very high grade example. So big number on that. 
Uh, here was a, another one that was labeled clear blister. You could maybe make an argument that it's starting to yellow there very slightly. Um, it's If it is, it's very slight. But this is Lando in his skiff guard disguise on the 65 back C Emperor offer graded AFA 80. Punched example. That one did sell for $300, but... I, I can't tell. It, it just could be shadows, but you know it, it's very possible this one is starting to yellow ever so slightly. Next up was a yellow blister 65 back A R2D2 sensor scope. This one was in an auction, AFA 80, but again, it was labeled yellow blister. You can see a little bit of rippling going on on the top. And I think I had somebody reach out about that and say, hey, what's going on there? And that is just what I call an overheating of the seal. When these when these blisters are secured to the card, they do use heat to kind of weld them to the card. And uh, sometimes they put too much heat on there and uh, that causes that rippling effect on the blister. You most often see that with uh, Empire Strikes Back carbacks. This is a good angle there. You can see how the heat was just too much when whoever the factory worker was or the settings on the on the machines, uh, it just causes that overheating and the rippling effect that you see there. But you most often see those on Empire Strikes Back cards, kind of like middle tier, you know, the middle uh, numbers, like the 48 backs, the 45 backs, 47 backs. They often do have those heat overseals that happen on Empire Strikes Back cards. But I guess they do happen still on, on later Return of the Jedi card backs because that clearly is what happened on that one. Three twenty three dollars was the final sales price on that one. Uh, next up was another one I sent to my Patreon supporters, a 77 back A Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight, AFA 80, obviously a yellowed blister, unpunched example, no price sticker. That one sold for four oh five, which I thought was a pretty good deal and about where I expected that one to sell. Looks like maybe in the top right hand corner it's got some sticker residue or something going on there but uh 405 is about right i think for a luke skywalker now on to the power of the force line this was an ungraded jawa on the power of the force card again unpunched no price sticker and uh, overall the car was in pretty good shape i would say um, seems like it's probably about a yellowed 80 and that one sold for 355 Next up was Ramba on the Power of the Force card, just light yellowing, AFA 85 on that one. So straight 85s for the subscores, archival case, beautiful unpunched example, no price sticker. 355 was the winning price on that one, but that's about as clear as you'll find for a Ramba. I'm, I'm sure there's some clear blister examples out there, but uh, it won't be for long. They, um, they almost always turn yellow. Next up was an AFA 85 A-Wing pilot, again unpunched with the kind of flying saucer hang tab type that we see, the kind of the larger uh, top to the hang tab. And uh, that one had fairly moderate yellowing. It wasn't terrible, but it was definitely on the darker side. 635 was the final win on, win on that one. But again, it was a straight 85. So, so that's a, a pretty fair deal, I feel like, for an AFA 85 A-Wing Pilot last 17 figure. Uh, next up was an unpunched Lando Calrissian on the Power of the Force card. That one sold for 281. Uh, I, I think that's a pretty good price for, I, I think this one would probably grade out at an 80 pretty easily. You can see very slight ding there in the upper left-hand corner, but uh, overall the card was in pretty good shape. I think it gets an 80, 80, 85 for the sub score. So 281 at 51, I mean, that's oftentimes what a Lando will sell for or close to it, un, ungraded, you know, loose complete. So 281, 51 seemed like a really good deal there. Uh, next up was a Droids C-3PO on the U.S. card, unpunched, and that one was graded AFA 80. That one sold for 1303, so big number there, but a uh, very clean example and a uh, nice straight card, so I can understand why that sold for what it did, but that's on the upper end of probably what I would pay. I, I, I personally probably wouldn't go that high, but... Um, you know, that, that number is getting close to what an R2-D2 pop-up droids mint on card. Uh, that those kind of tend to go 1500 to $1,800 ish at the top end. Uh, but you know, it was a high grade example, so I can understand why. Next up was a Canadian Ewoks. This one is, I think King Gorniche. Is that King Gorniche? Uh, yeah, King Gorniche, unpunched example, yellow blister, 154.50 on that one. Pretty decent deal, I feel like, for a, a fairly clean card. And then we're going to finish things off with a number of these KB Toys Overstock 2-packs. These obviously are always rough. We talk about these a lot 
they were just thrown in big bins in the KB Toys stores as the Star Wars line was ending, and they were just kind of slapping these figures out there. So the first one was a Hoth Stormtrooper with Han trench coat. The Hoth Stormtrooper is not one that I saw I see very much in these KB Toys Overstock two packs. Han trench coat is you you often do see Han trench coat a lot. So three seventy was the final winning bid on that one. Anytime you get one of the main characters on, in these Overstock 2-packs, they do t dent, uh, tend to command a big number. And this is Darth Vader with Squid Head. That one sold for $449. So that was a fairly big number. Uh, and then next up, obviously, the Biker Scout is a very popular focus collect collector kind of item. And so this one was packed with a first 12 figure in Chewbacca. So that's a pretty big one. And that one sold for $536.74. That's the biggest number. To me, I, I personally would rather have the, the, the Darth Vader, but I'm a little bit biased. Uh, but, you know, I'm assuming this one's maybe a little more common than this combination of Chewbacca and the Biker Scout. And then finally, we had yet another Han trench coat along with Maydeen, General Maydeen. General Maydeen's another one that you do see pretty regularly. The G Gamorrean Guard is another one that you often see a lot. Uh, this one sold for $137.38. And uh, again, not too surprising, just given that we got two fairly common figures that appeared in these KB Toys Overstock 2-packs. You can see that it sold for quite a bit less relative to the other ones that had some of the more desirable character combinations. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this look at recent sales for Mint on Cards. Thank you again to Mike Cities for sharing that really cool flyer from the early 1990s from uh, down in Australia. Just crazy how cheap things used to be, right? Uh, thank you again, and I'll be back soon.